Hi, this is Sandra K. Webster, and today I'm going to show you how to do uh, repeated measures one factor ANOVA using Excel. We'll start with the problem, and this is a problem I used on one of my exams. So, Anna tested how the eyes in photographs affect accurate emotion identification. She began with 126 photographs of models displaying one of seven basic emotions. She covered the upper and lower face in one-third of the photos, covered the eyes in one-third of the photos, eyes covered, and showed the full face in the remaining one-third of the photos. She expected that emotion identification would be more accurate in the full face condition, next best in the eyes only condition, and worst in the covered eyes condition. Participants identified emotions for the 126 images, each presented for three seconds. This sentence, as well as the rest of what's come up before, lets us know this is a repeated measures experiment. It's a within subjects design. And the numbers represent below represent the proportions of correct emotions for each of the three conditions. And this is just a part of Anna's data. So in order to do this, we have to copy the data into Excel, which I've already done. And then we have to use the data analysis tool. So under the data menus, data analysis, I am going to choose something, and when I first saw this, I thought, oh no, this can't be right. And so I've actually calculated these analyses three different ways to make sure that it is. We are doing a one-factor repeated measures analysis of variance. But in order to do it with Excel, we're going to say we're doing a two-factor without replication. And so we have to say, okay. The input range is all the data, including the subject numbers. And this is important. You need to have something on there because we're going to treat the individual subject as one of our factors. So you will recall from the basic theory of analysis of variance, if it's a within subjects design, you look at the effects of the treatment within each individual subject. And so we're going to be using that for our within subjects variance and we'll look at eyes only, eyes covered, full face for our treatment variance. And so I'm going to uh, choose to put my data in this space and make sure that I get rid of that other error that was already there just because it came up that way. And I say, OK. Now, here is the results that we got from Excel. We got an average for each of the subjects. And this doesn't actually do anything for us, but it's important in computing the changes for each subject across the three treatments. We got the averages for each of the three treatments. So there's 21 subjects. And the accuracy for eyes only was 13.58, eyes covered was 15.55, and full face was 12.99. Now, these numbers are not consistent with Anna's hypothesis. Sorry, those are the sums. But if we look at the averages, they're still not consistent. So the sums would be how many, and the averages would be the av average. So they were right about 50% when the eyes were covered about two-thirds when the eyes were only thing they saw, and down here a little bit less for the full face. So the question is, is this a significant difference in this within subjects design? These are the descriptive statistics that we would use. So we won't make the mistake of calling the average the sum. Here is the inferential statistics. The rows, remember, are the within subjects variance. So that's within. And it calculated an F for that, but that's not something we're going to interpret. The columns are our treatment variance. In this case, it has to do with what was shown in the photographs. The degrees of freedom are two because there were three different conditions. The error degrees of freedom, that's the, the denominator, is 40. So these are things you're going to need to report. 
the F statistic you're going to need to report. And this p-value doesn't look very good to many of you because it's in a strange notation. It's in scientific notation and basically you have to move the decimal point over five points. And so this is what it really is, 0 0.00007. So it is a significant difference even though it doesn't look very big. And so we can report this as less than 0 0.0001 and that would be a good way to report it. Now we still have the question of which of these are different and we'll have to do a multiple comparison test and I've made another video on multiple comparison tests for that to be able to tell which of these are truly different from the others. But that's how we do a repeated measures analysis of variance in Excel. So to review it, when you look under data analysis, you don't find ANOVA single factor repeated measures. This single factor at the top is between subjects. We use the two factor without replication and treat the s subjects as the second factor. And so that's the way we get around the fact that Excel doesn't do it. So that's all, folks.